Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you guys are all doing super well. Today is a lazy day at home and it's freaking hot out. Um, but we're gonna start off this vlog with a DIY. Um, I recently posted several photos of a DIY recently made on Instagram stories and someone requested for me to share. It's pretty self-explanatory and also disclaimer, um, I didn't come up with this DIY project myself or anything. I definitely Googled um, how to make it. I'll show, you, I'll show you what it is in a second. But um, yeah, I'll show you guys my inspiration as well. And this is the final product. This is what I made. I should have moved that out of the way before I shared it with you guys. But it is a foam mirror, basically. So I basically bought a mirror and then used... I'll show you guys in a second, but this foam formula thing. And then painted over it with blue paint and yeah made this tray it actually this mirror actually um has some chain behind it really thin chain to hang on the wall so that is an option but i've kept it as a tray for now which i really really like so i'm just I just have it on my dining table with this crazy looking plant and some little ornaments i really really like it though it's really really cool so over here you can see i've prepared another diy using the same technique but instead of a mirror, I'm using this like stone thing, rounded thing, which I just got at Hobby Crafts. Um, everything else I got on Amazon. So this is basically expanding foam, super self-explanatory. Um, I did not know how much I needed, so I bought a pack of three. You definitely just need one if you wanna make something like that. I was able to make that and I covered a whole um, jug basically with foam. I threw the jug away though because that really failed. Um, this already comes with this kind of nozzle contraption thingy, but my extra self bought this as well off of Amazon thinking this would make things easier. It doesn't, I have no idea how to attach this onto there. I have YouTubed it, I Googled it, and it says to literally screw it on basically, but it's not screwing, it just doesn't get tight. So I don't know, every time I've tried it, it just explodes up at the top, like the foam comes out here instead of there. So that's a fail, um, but there's that. And this actually came, or maybe this came with all the gloves as well. Um, I don't use the gloves though, but obviously be careful and probably use the gloves is better. So the first step is to unscrew this from the top there and then screw this on top of here, um, which I'll definitely need both hands for. Give me a sec. I also just realized I was um, turning it the wrong way. But anyways, you can put this on there, which is what I used at first when making that one. But I also noticed very quickly how it's so hard to control the foam. It literally bursts out. Like, I've seen several people say that, and I'm like, all right, I'm prepared, I'm prepared. Like, genuinely, I was not prepared <laughs> when it actually came out. Like, it just shot out, and it just was really hard to keep its shape. Um, and when it's kind of there, it's kind of sticky, gluey, and hard to, like, move. So you just kind of, you, you don't want to move it around, you just kind of leave it there. So um, I'm taking this off because it's easier to control the foam with just this bit here. And essentially, or with a shorter nozzle is what I mean, you shake it for 30 seconds, they say. So, and you just hold on to this bit and squirt out. So even, okay, I'm doing this with one hand <laughs> on the camera, one hand doing this, hopefully. There we go. See, it's like easy con to control. Whereas with that, I don't even wanna show you guys, I really don't wanna ruin this, but it just explodes outwards. So I like to do like half on and half off the stone or the mirror, whatever you're using. You can create different shapes with it if you want. I kind of like it just looking like random. And I like it like super pudgy and like cloudy basically. It's also really easy to get carried away because it's kind of fun. So as you can see, I got a little bit of the expanding foam on the stone, um, and same with same, same with the mirror. You can just use um, nail polish remover to remove that off there. It's not going to work with just water. It's super sticky. I got some on my finger. Um, yeah, it's probably best to use gloves. It's not really great for your skin or anything, but whatever. Oh my gosh. 
Maybe I should do this when this dry is in. There we go. And we just have to wait 24 hours for this to dry. I mean, I feel like it dries much faster than 24 hours, but it says on here to leave it for 24 hours. So just follow that. <laughs> So I wanted to come on here and share with you guys this Instagram page called Designer Treasure. I absolutely love this page. I'm always um, stalking their stories and their page. They basically sell uh, vintage um, designer goods or repurposed designer goods. And oftentimes in their stories, they'll share like what exactly it is they're like pulling apart, whether it's like an old like Louis Vuitton pencil case or whatever. And they make, they repurpose them. I keep saying they. So the guy that... Um, runs this page is Michael, although it is based in Belgium and I believe he is from there, so maybe it's pronounced differently, um, maybe it's Mikkel, I'm sorry. Michael, Mikkel, either way, he is amazing um, and he always responds so quickly and is really helpful and I get everything I ordered like so quickly, so I absolutely love them or love um, ordering from him. I realized I just went on a tangent there. Back to what I was saying, um, he remakes or repurposes things um, to make them into like um, masks or he makes lighters, glider covers as well, necklace pendants, um, stuff like that. So I wanted to share with you guys some of the things I've ordered from him. I am so obsessed. I think the first couple things I ordered from him was this gorgeous Dior um, scrunchie. And he was so, so generous and gifted me this Gucci one, which is super, super soft and luscious. This feels really nice in my hair. And then I ordered these two together at the same time um, from Designer Treasure. I had already bought the a green version of this and I really, really like that, um, like the shape on me. So I decided to get the pink version. These are super cool. These are like extra large pink CC earrings. Um, I, I, I had to make sure they were bigger because usually these CCs are a little bit smaller for the ear, but this is like a bigger size. So I thought that was really cute. And then I ordered this backpack, which is super random. And honestly, I don't think I would have if I didn't have this. But um, I just thought this was so cool as a set together. This is from the same collection. This is a Dior vintage piece. It's got like the same kind of charms there as this one does. This one's a little like handheld one. I sh definitely shared this before in one of my videos. I got this one in Singapore like several years ago. It's one of my earlier vintage buys and um, yeah I just love how you can. It's very subtle with the Dior logoing at the back but still with the stitching it's really cute. So when I saw that um, he was selling a freaking matching backpack. I was like, I have to get it. Um, it is going to be interesting on how to wear it together, but I definitely want to try it because this will be so cute. It's got the same like fluff detail at the top and then there's like rope straps. I just couldn't resist creating this set, um, especially because I've never seen this backpack before and I just think it's gonna be, it's fun. I don't, I'm not a huge backpack person, but luckily this also wasn't so pricey. So I got a great deal on this and yeah, I just think they're cute together. And then most recently I purchased this little pendant um, from Designer Treasure. It's a Hello Kitty and Gucci and Vogue kind of collaboration. And it's just a little pendant with Hello Kitty wearing a runway outfit from Gucci 2014, I believe. And then lastly, we have these two lighters, um, which are freaking adorable. They were so kindly gifted to me. These and the scrunchies are examples of um, repurposed designer goods. Um, so this, these were obviously something else before and he cut it up and sewed it or glued it and made them into lighter covers and um, scrunchies. But yeah, how cute are these? So adorable. Okay, so it's the next morning now and this has dried up. I mean, it dried, it already dried last night, but obviously I wanted to wait till morning to do the rest with you guys. So obviously I forget to mention yesterday that you can work on pretty much any surface I've noticed, um, cause this peels off quite quick, quite easily um, on anything. Like obviously we can see here, I've already started. But um, yeah, it just peels off quite easily. Um, in fact, when I did that one, I used aluminium foil underneath, and that seemed to be a bit more difficult to peel off than just 
this paper, like a paper bag. That's what it looks like underneath. And then I just get to painting basically. <laughs> Pretty bog standard. Um, I'm using acrylic paint, this purple one, and then this pink one, I'm just gonna mix the two. And I feel like definitely pay attention to detail um, and get all the little holes and stuff. I think it just makes it look better. So as you can see, I literally just squirted the paint out, out of the tube right onto the tray and started painting. Um, if you want to be more creative, definitely mix your own color. Although I am doing some sort of ombre effect. I'm working on it. <laughs> um, I also noticed I should have maybe done a base color to this and then put the purple on top so that the color pops more. So I'll definitely have to go over the bottom bit a couple more times for the color to be nice. But yeah, I'm just going over the first layer really quickly with a bigger brush just to get it painted and going and I'll focus on the details later. Okay, so this is what I have done so far. I basically did like an ombre in the background and then on top I did like opposite tones, um, a little swirls, a couple of the swirls basically. Anyways, I found this in my storage room. It's like this glitter ultra shimmer protective sealer. I don't know. I honestly don't know what it is really for, but... Okay, so while I'm waiting for my DIY to dry, I've come into my closet um, because I want to share, well I've spoken about wanting to share some more of my love of vintage bags in, in particular. I like vintage anything, but vintage bags in particular. I added on a lipstick just to look a bit more <laughs> presentable. But, um, but yeah, I have laid out some of my vintage on the floor. These are all, um, Chanel. And, um, okay, before I go forward, keep, when I keep saying vintage, to be honest, I look so obviously I, I looked um, at each bag and tried to find what year they were made, whether I was able to find the actual collection and know exactly what year, or I just looked on the authenticity card slash the little hologram to know like about what years. Um, some of these are definitely not vintage, they're definitely more retro. I feel like on Vestiaire, like as long as it looks like a little bit more retro, it's like labeled as vintage. Um, so obviously my collection's mostly from the 90s, which I, was, I would consider those vintage, but maybe the 2000s are more like retro. So yeah, from 90s to 2000s. Um, but just for the sake of not having to keep explaining, I might just keep just saying they're vintage -y, but you guys know. Um, yeah, some of these are definitely from the 2000s. So basically everything I have on the floor here are obviously bought secondhand off of Vestiaire mostly, or any other, um, Vintage shops, if I remember, I'll mention them. I did order these in order of how old they are, from the youngest to the oldest. So this one is probably the most casual one out of the bunch. It's just a crossbody. It's in amazing condition. I got this in Arnhem in Holland. Sorry, excuse the paint on my hands, by the way. Obviously, I was just painting, but don't worry. It's all dried up now. Um, Anyways, yeah, this is just an overall very sporty vibe kind of bag. I don't have a lot of sporty vibe bags, so it's nice to have that in the collection. Um, there's the back. I have found some, like, um, similar ones online in case anyone's interested. I did find this one in a beige color from Vestiaire, so I'll link that down below. Um, anyways, this bag is the youngest, like I said, and it came out in 2006. This next bag is amazing. I think it's a beach bag, but obviously you can use it for whenever. Um, this is freaking adorable. I love how oversized and massive it is. It comes with a pouch to keep your bits and bobs in. And of course, all the little details of a Chanel zipper and just a massive compartment basically. Um, it's again in very good condition. This one came out in 2005, so just a year before the other one did. Um, Here's the bottom. I can't wait to use this whenever I go to the beach next. 
<clears throat> this shoulder bag is, well, first of all, insanely, insanely adorable. Look at it. Um, <laughs> I wasn't able to find an exact year this was made, but I believe, um, I'm doing research, it's from between 2003 to 2004. And... Yeah, it took me a minute to find this bag online, but finally found I basically had to do, like search for like Chanel Lucky Symbol patchwork or wool bags, something like that. I'm not really sure what I did, but embroidery bag, something like that. I love how Lux the chain feels. It's super nice and heavy. Of course, the little charm is cute, but obviously the main attraction is a beautiful embroidery at the back of just random Chanel symbols, perfume bottle tweed jacket, Lucky Charm, so, or sorry, um, a clover, <laughs> um, yeah, just so sweet. I had seen this bag previously and passed on it, and I really, really regretted it, so, um, I'm so glad I managed to find it again not too long ago, and yeah, in really, really amazing condition as well, and then the cute little zipper. On to the next row, and this one is a really sweet little clutch slash wristlet kind of thing. And obviously it's got a crossword kind of design to it. Um, this one's, I believe, the same age as the previous one, like pretty similar. Um, let me just check. It's 2004. So yeah, on the photo I thought it looked dirty, but it isn't. It's supposed to be this gorgeous um, beige color, which I prefer better anyway, because newspapers are generally not, like, fully white white so um yeah it's nice that it's kind of like an off off white kind of beige color thing so yeah very very cute this next one is so special i love this one so much it's one of my favorites i absolutely love the color combination and just the design of it it's adorable as in like the pattern on it um this was my first vintage bag <laughs> that i bought um it isn't vintage because i believe it's from made between 2000 and 2002, I checked this code, um, matched it onto a chart online, and it said between 2000 and 2002. Um, but I really, really loved the color combination in this. So it's got a long chain. Don't worry, the waffle, the waffle does not come with it. I just, it's like a stress ball. I just have it on here because, I don't know, sometimes you just want to squeeze a stress ball. Um, I don't, well, first of all, I haven't used this in a long time. It just sits pretty on display but I if I wore it out I wouldn't have I wouldn't keep the thingy on but yeah just such a freaking adorable micro micro little 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 but um purse and then we have these two which look slightly similar but not really this one obviously has a top flap and that one just has a zipper on top this does have zippers too um but it has a little pocket at the front this one is a little bit older than this one so, um, the white one is from 1997 to 1999, whereas the orange one is from 1996 to 1997. Um, again, off of authenticity information. Um, I love them both so much. I don't even know where to begin. I did have to fix this bag a little bit because the, um, leather did rip a little bit and start loosening up. So I got that fixed, um, at my dad's. First of all, the gold on these bags, I'm sure you guys have heard so many times, are just, it's just so stunning, honestly. It's so much more nicer. The color is so vibrant and gorgeous. Um, this one has straps come out like that. So this one has like a leather strap, whereas this one just has the, um, well, leather, of course, but with the chain. This one even came with the booklet which is nice, and then of course the authenticity card, like I said. But yeah, I love these. These are probably, to my opinion, the most vintage looking bags in my collection. By the way, I forget to mention some of the ones I've found online for you guys, if anyone's interested. I did find another one of these, but it is in a smaller size. However, it's in this most gorgeous, like, green, greeny blue color. It's just so stunning. Um, yeah, it's a little bit small, I think, though. So I'll, I'll link it below. Again, it's off of Vestaire. I don't think I was able to find these two, but I was able to find this one in black. Um, and I don't know if I found that one quite yet. Maybe something similar. This one, I did find... Um, I did find this online, but it was on a website I've never shopped before, and 
I don't know, I wasn't too sure about that one, so I won't link it. But regardless, whatever I share, whatever links I share, these are all vintage secondhand, so I don't guarantee that they are authentic. Please judge yourself and decide yourself. Um, they are websites that I have shopped on before, though, so that's why I am linking them. Um, but yeah, like I said, you got to judge it yourself. So now on to the last row, and this row is definitely vintage vintage. Those two I would consider vintage vintage as well. Kind of from there onwards, I would say more retro. And then from the white bag to here is more vintage. So this really sweet top handle one, let me just check my notes. Um... 1996 to 1997. Again, I think it's the same age, I believe, as the orange one. Oh, it's so freaking cute. I got this off. I got this one off of Vestair, and as soon as I saw it, I bought it immediately. It is just too cute. It's like this gorgeous lamb um, lamb skin in this kind of orange tone red. Again, with the most gorgeous vintage Chanel gold. Um, it's on both sides, by the way. How? freaking cute and it's like a clasp like any other Chanel bag would be like. This one is obviously a vintage classic flap. Um, when I bought this I literally bought it because of the color. I knew that the person who was selling it had recolored her bag. Um, it used to just be obviously this, the beige one but she dyed it this really really fun bubblegum Barbie kind of pink bag and I really liked it. I really wanted um, a bag in this color. I think it, they did a really gorgeous job, especially with this vintage gold. I think it makes it look so much better than using a gold bag, um, a gold um, hardware bag now at Chanel. But yeah, as you can see, just, but yeah, as you can see, it's just painted so well. Um, and this one, I believe, was from the year I was born, 1994. Yep. So that's really exciting. <laughs> as old as I am. <laughs> also, something about this leather and how it aged, and maybe even the paint, <laughs> it just feels really, really nice and squidgy. It's just, I don't know, very satisfying. <laughs> this one definitely sits like a princess in my collection. I... I'm freaking obsessed with her. I got her several years ago. I found um, I found another one online that's available. Again, from a website I've never bought on though, but I still am going to link it because I have looked through it and I do trust it and I would buy off of this website. Um, but I just wanted to mention I have not uh, bought from the website that I've linked this on. Um, but it looks pretty legit to me, so have a look yourself if you're interested. Um, and see what you think but this is genuinely well this was a dream of mine and I'm so happy I was able to fulfill it several years ago um, it has a big mirror on the inside some compartments Ooh, and then underneath it's got Chanel stitching and feet of course but yeah honestly I have yet to use this bag anywhere it just sits on my shelf um, I had always imagined if I ever like took a road trip from here to like Switzerland or something, I'll maybe bring it with me, but <laughs> that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> and again, these two, so they're both from 1994. This is also as old as I am. <laughs> okay guys, I'm gonna have to make a correction because this one should not have been the last one. Um, this is, you should never just believe what you read online, guys. So basically, long story short, I found the same bag online. This is on Luxury Promise. It's the same bag with the Love Heart clasp. Um, obviously, this one has blue around it, and this one is white, which, by the way, now that I've seen that, I'm definitely going to get this colored, I think. Maybe some, maybe like a neon color, um, as well as a strap, because it looks so much cooler. But anyway, so this is a PVC bag, and... On this website, it says it's from the 1980s, and I was like, I just believed it for some reason and just wrote that down and just, okay. But as I was sitting here looking at it, I'm like, there's just no way this is from the 1980s, all right? Um, there's just no way. <laughs> so I obviously went and checked the authenticity code, and actually this is not even supposed to be in this, uh, within this video because it's, um, the code had 1-2 on it which basically means it was made between 2008 and 2009. So 
I mean, I guess, I guess it does fit in here. It's, it was made before 2010, but still, um, <laughs> definitely not from the 1980s. So that's annoying that I just filmed this whole thing and realized this is not even the last one. These two are um, my oldest Chanel's. <laughs> there we go. But yeah, I guess I'll share this one anyway. I have definitely shared this in a what I got for my birthday because I bought this for my birthday several years ago from Vestir. And, um, and I am thoroughly loving it, especially in London um, under the rain. So yeah. Okay, so it's again the next day now and this has dried up. I thought it would be a little bit more shimmery. Um, I don't think it looks shimmery, it just looks really glossy to me. But maybe that's just my eyes deceiving me, I'm not sure. Anyways, um, what you then have to do, and then you just turn it over and I would just paint the back, the bottom of this. Um, and then also you'll see that you probably missed a lot of like little like bubble holes or like air sockets that like air escaped or whatever. So I just like to fill those in as well. And then once that is complete, just wait for it to dry and voila. I also think I might repaint this green, like bright green, <laughs> um, just because I don't know, I'm kind of bored that this is all purple. We'll see. Okay, I'm gonna end my vlog right here next to my Sora Knots plant. Um, cover. How cute. I love it. It's super thick. Um, I love the way it looks with this plant as well. Very, very cute. It came about a week ago and yeah, very happy with it. By the way, in case you guys don't know what I'm talking about, um, a couple weeks ago I did a video shopping for um, home and fashion things um, from black owned businesses and this was one of the items I purchased and it's arrived. Um, the rest is still on its way but i'm gonna end my vlog here i hope you guys enjoyed this random vlog again and enjoyed a random diy actually thanks for taking the time to watch this video and i'll speak to you guys in my next one bye